Coming up on KTVH News at 5. Two more Montanans have been accused of participating in the January 6th riot at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Plus... I'm Mike Dennison in Helena. Coming up, a closer look at the impacts in Montana of President Biden's orders on oil and gas developments. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Andy Curtis, and thanks for joining us. Two more Montanans have been accused of participating in the January 6th riot at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., and being present at one of the most visible confrontations with authorities inside the Capitol. MTN's John Riley reports. Court documents say Helena area brothers Joshua Calvin Hughes and Jared Wade Hughes turned themselves into Helena police after seeing national news coverage from the Helena Capitol and believing they were wanted by the FBI. Joshua and Jared Hughes each faced nine charges for their alleged involvement in the riot. Prosecutors say the brothers were among the first 10 rioters to enter the U.S. Capitol at that part of the building. Jared Hughes is accused of working with another man to kick open a door that would let more people enter the building. From there, court records say the crowd began to move towards the Senate floor. According to investigators, the two met up with another suspect, Douglas Austin Jensen, who had engaged with a lone Capitol Police officer, Eugene Goodman. Images of surveillance video show the mob advancing up a flight of stairs towards Goodman. Goodman has been called a hero for baiting the rioters away from the Senate floor while lawmakers were still evacuating. Goodman led the crowd to an adjacent hallway and back up, where the confrontation continued until rioters left the atrium. Investigators say the Hughes brothers were among a group who then forced their way onto the Senate floor, where video captured the two men opening senators' desks and reviewing sensitive material inside. The Hughes brothers are two of three Montanans now that have had charges filed against them regarding the Capitol riots. The other was a Dillon man who was arrested and released last week. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. Among the charges listed in the court documents are obstructing law enforcement during a civil disorder, entering the Capitol with the intent to disrupt official business, disrupting government business, obstruction of an official proceeding, destruction of property, and aiding and abetting. All right, now with a look at our weekend forecast, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. Well, we've got a, a little snow moving through parts of the state right now, but that will not uh, really impact much of the weekend here. But take a look at Monarch and uh, visibility reduced. Road surface, at least right here in Monarch, not looking that bad, looking wet. Here's the top of McDonald Pass, and you can kind of see that road surface with temperatures close to the freezing point, but everywhere the temperatures will be dropping down below the freezing point here tonight. The, thus, uh, the potential for some uh, slippery conditions out there. So we've kind of have this little stripe of snow that is working its way from western Montana out across the central part of the state, working into north central Montana, parts of the High Line now picking up some of that snow. We'll take a closer look at the radar coming up in the full forecast, but it's a little icy out there this evening and through the overnight hours. But tomorrow and really Sunday as well, sunshine galore, pretty nice for the final couple of days of uh, January, but the beginning of February, yeah, looking frigid. Andy and I were just discussing the possibility of getting down below zero. I'll let you know when that might be. That's coming up. As Montana approaches the milestone of 100,000 COVID-19 vaccinations, state leaders are increasing their calls for the federal government to provide more doses. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has more on the latest data. Next week, Montana is set to receive more than 15,000 first doses of COVID-19 vaccines. But Governor Greg Gianforte says the state could administer twice that many if the federal government provided them. As of Friday morning, state data showed more than 99,000 vaccine doses had been administered in Montana, with nearly 25,000 people fully immunized. Gianforte pointed to CDC data showing the state has administered about two-thirds of the doses it has received, one of the best rates in the country. But he said Montana has received one of the lowest amounts of vaccine per 100,000 population. We're doing a terrific job as the CDC data show, but we're not being rewarded with an appropriate dose allocation from the federal government. Gianforte sent a letter to President Joe Biden this week, urging the federal government to do all it can to increase availability. 
Dr. Greg Holtzman, the state medical director, said those who are now eligible to receive the vaccine should contact their local public health departments to find out what they will need to do. That does not mean everyone that is in 1B will be able to get their vaccine next week. We don't have the supply for the demand that's there. But it's important for you to know how you can get the vaccine to get on the list that may be available within your communities and know where to go to find that. Holtzman said he's hopeful about the progress on a new vaccine from Johnson & Johnson, which would require only a single shot and make distribution much faster. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The state's numbers do not include people who have already been vaccinated through federal programs. Leaders said that several thousand more Montanans have received doses through the Indian Health Service and the VA. And active cases of COVID-19 and hospitalizations from the virus here in Montana do continue to decline. As of today, there are about 3,600 active cases and active hospitalizations are down to just over 100. The statewide death total, though, does remain at 1,225. And if you're out of work because of the pandemic, there's a new opportunity for you to sign up to receive health care. There will be an open enrollment period on healthcare.gov from February 15th to May 15th. President Joe Biden's administration created the opportunity in response to so many people being out of work across the country. The website allows you to purchase health insurance if you don't have an employer providing it just yet. A nonprofit called Montana Navigator is available to help people sign up. The program director says people can reach out now to make an appointment. Really, it's a one stop shop. If somebody has health insurance questions, uh, they can reach out to one of our folks and we'll spend as much time as they need to make sure that they get everything. We have the contact information for the Montana Navigator site in this story on our website. And we also now know who will be the resident Cascade County Sheriff's deputy in Belt. Logan Livingston will be moving to Belt with his wife coming up soon here, now that the town has found a place for he and his wife to live. He has been with the Sheriff's Office for a little while now, as we were reporting. Last year, Cascade County Commissioners gave the Sheriff's Office approval to have a full-time deputy in Belt. Sheriff Jesse Slaughter has promised to make this happen since he ran for sheriff. This now leaves Cascade as the only community in the county without a resident deputy. Honestly, I'm ecstatic. Um, this community is part of uh, an area that I've been assigned for roughly two years now, and I've really enjoyed this community, so really excited to actually live here and serve it that way. And like I just mentioned before, this leaves Cascade as the only community in the county without a resident deputy. And when we come back, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz will have a complete check of your forecast and weather. And later, what are the actual impacts in Montana of President Joe Biden's actions halting the Keystone XL pipeline and oil and gas leasing? We'll hear from MTN Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison on the issue. Tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, not a lot of snow out there. Some places into the mountains have seen about three or four inches, but it will get slippery here tonight as the temperatures drop. Still a shade above uh, freezing in Great Falls at 33 degrees, and we will be dropping into the teens tonight in Helena. It's up here closer to the Continental Divide where there has been about three or four inches of snow. A little mix of some rain and snow depending on elevation in the valley though. 37 degrees and we're headed below freezing here tonight in the capital area as well. So still most of Montana above the freezing point and colder air will be working in behind this area of snow here tonight. You can see around Helena fragmented pieces of some snow moving over the Elkhorns around Boulder, Boulder Hill. Still some snow out there around Deer Lodge and uh, Elliston as well. Some snow up through Wolf Creek Canyon. Uh, road conditions still are wet and boy, pretty much all day long. Southern and eastern Cascade County has been seeing some of that snow. The Highwoods, uh, good snow in Highwood, even up there around Fort Benton and boy, belt to geyser looking pretty snowy and slick. Some of that snow moving in the direction of Lewistown after we had a little mix of some rain and snow and also up here around Hayes and Zortman, Landusky, Fort Benton. Belknap, Dodson, Malta picking up some of that snow and it's uh, beginning to move towards the Glasgow area. Should see
see maybe up to an inch in uh, Glasgow here through the night into tomorrow. This is part of that big storm system that came in from California. 106 inches of snow at Mammoth Mountain from one storm. More from this storm than any storm that they've had all of the storms uh, together cumulatively up until this storm. So here's uh, what you can expect for tonight. There still will be some snow over the next few hours, especially up here in the north central part of the state. And that snow is coming down at a pretty good clip. So uh, over the course of three or four hours, we may get up to two or three inches of snow, almost an inch an hour uh, snowfall rates. There's some of that snow working its way into northeast Montana through the overnight hours into tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, some clouds, but it's uh, mainly sunny skies by the afternoon for most of the state. Uh, the clouds will be melting away and a lot of that snow that uh, has accumulated will be melting away as well with temperatures kind of mild behind that system. Heading into Sunday, most of the state mostly sunny. It looks very nice, except for if anybody's headed up around Libby or Kalispell. Looks a little cloudy in that direction, but uh, there's that possibility of maybe one or two inches out here uh, through the north central part of the state. But it's really the icy conditions with uh, falling temperatures tonight that uh, we all will have to watch out for. Uh, or if you're traveling into one of the areas that did see some of the precipitation. Look at these lows down into the teens after the snow moves out. Uh, Glasgow down to about 20, a little snow in that part of the state. Some snow in Lewistown and teens and 20s around to the Helena area as well. So things again will be slick tonight and tomorrow morning. But uh, by tomorrow afternoon, look at these high temperatures, 30s and 40s. Uh, with mostly sunny skies. All right, upper 20s here into the northeast part of Montana. Uh, we'll be right near 40 degrees around Lewistown and 30s into the higher terrain around Helena, Helena Valley, likely hitting close to about the lower 40s here for tomorrow. Mid 40s on Sunday and maybe even 52 on the first day of February. Enjoy it because after that, snow moving in Tuesday night into Wednesday, then again Thursday night into Friday. It's looking like Friday night we could start dropping below zero for most of the state. Uh, Great Falls, a mild weekend, mild start to February until we get into Groundhog Day. Snow Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday night into Friday and well below zero, maybe parts of the state 20 to 30 below next weekend. Well, as President Joe Biden halts the Keystone XL pipeline and stops oil and gas leasing on federal lands, we've heard Republican critics say the president is waging a war on energy and costing Montana and other states thousands of jobs and millions in tax revenue. But what are the actual impacts here in Montana of Biden's actions on the pipeline and oil and gas leasing? In the first of a two-part series, MTN's Mike Dennison takes a closer look. Make no mistake, canceling the Keystone XL pipeline will cost Montana some construction jobs and tax revenue. People have been laid off and a tremendous amount of money spent on pipe manufactured in the United States that now has no place to go. There's been a tremendous amount of investment that has gone into this project. Canadian pipeline developer TC Energy, based in Calgary, says it's laying off a thousand people, but hasn't said how many are in the U.S. or Montana. Yet environmental review documents and company information give us a good look at the impacts in Montana. The underground pipeline would traverse 285 miles of northeast Montana from the Port of Morgan to the South Dakota border near Ekalaka. Between 800 and 1,000 workers would be in Montana during the construction phase for anywhere from 9 to 27 months. Many of those workers would be in man camps near Hinsdale, Circle, and Baker. But only 10 to 15 percent of those workers would be hired locally and just a handful of local jobs would be needed to maintain the completed pipeline. The lasting revenue impact in Montana, however, would be property taxes paid by TC Energy. According to the environmental study of the pipeline, $63 million a year in the six counties along the pipeline route. That money would be divided among the state treasury, local schools, and local governments. McCone County Commissioner Jim Mose says schools, roads, and other infrastructure in his rural county could certainly use the boost. And the pipeline also would have a terminal near Baker that Montana and North Dakota oil producers could use to transport their product southbound. The more options we have, the better price that we can get for Montana crude. Anytime we can do something to increase the value of Montana crude oil, 
uh, everybody in Montana benefits. But as you can imagine, not everyone agrees that Keystone is a net economic gain for Montana. Whitney Taney of Montana Conservation Voters says boosting oil development is not a path to prosperity for most of Montana. They should be taking actions to protect our climate, our environment, our water, our public lands. Our economy here in Montana is largely driven by that outdoor recreation economy. And tribes on the Fort Peck Indian Reservation say the pipeline threatens their water supply and that its workforce could be a health threat. Lance Warstar of the Assiniboine Council says at a pipeline work area last spring, he saw numerous people not wearing masks or taking precautions against COVID-19. Warstar believes long-term impacts of the pipeline and oil development will override any financial benefits for the region. And we look at the big picture and we look at that uh, carbon dioxide emission um, content in Earth's atmosphere. I, I just don't see how people would choose money and anybody that just thinks that it's uh, okay to come into our area and you know work on this pipeline to put food on their table. They're not thinking about um, the, the drinking water in our table. As long as Joe Biden is president, it looks like Keystone XL is done for. Next week, we'll look at Biden's moratorium on oil and gas leasing on federal lands and what that means for Montana. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. The Keystone XL pipeline would be primarily transporting crude oil from Canada's tar sands in northern Alberta. And you can see Mike Dennison's full detailed report on our website. And coming up next on the News at 5, forecaster Asia Ray has some tips for you to avoid injury during the winter months. From Montana's news leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back, everyone. While we're no strangers to ice and cold weather here in Montana, forecaster Asia Ray still has some tips for us to avoid injury during the winter months. When the weather turns icy and cold, emergency rooms can fill up quickly due to cold weather injuries. I spoke with Andrea Hedblum, an urgent care physician assistant at St. Peter's Health. We see a lot of ankle sprains, wrist sprains from falls. The best way to prevent slips and falls. Wearing appropriate footwear is extremely important, um, whether it be snow boots or traction devices. You know, and just being aware of your surroundings when you're walking, going slow, not moving too quickly. But it's not just slips and falls. Physical exertion that comes with clearing away snow can also be dangerous. We also see an increase in heart attacks uh, related to snow shoveling. Protect yourself by limiting the stress you put on your body. To start out slowly, um, making sure you're shoveling small amounts, only taking a lot of breaks, and certainly stopping if you develop uh, any symptoms uh, that could be heart related, such as chest pain, shortness of breath, pain radiating to your arm or your jaw. Anyone outside for an extended period also needs to be alert for signs of frostbite and hyperthermia. Frostbite occurs when the skin and underlining tissue freeze. The first sign of frostbites are numbness or tingling uh, in the area, decreased sensation, um, changes in skin color, whether your skin becomes more red or becomes more pale. Andrea says frostbite is most common in fingers, toes, nose. If you think you have frostbite, you need to seek medical attention. Hyperthermia occurs when your body loses heat faster than it can produce it, dropping your body temperature dangerously low. Symptoms include shivering, shallow breathing, weak pulse, clumsiness, drowsiness, and confusion. In the elements, if you are with somebody who seems like they're getting a little bit confused, it's definitely a time to get them indoors. I'm weather forecaster Asia Ray, and now you're a little more weather wise. We'll wrap things up here when we come back, but first, here's a look at what you can expect tonight on the NBC Nightly News. When we welcome our West Coast viewers, we'll tell you about Johnson & Johnson's new COVID vaccine, what the company says about its effectiveness, especially against the dangerous new South Africa variant. Also, I'll be speaking to Dr. Fauci about what it means for speeding up vaccinations when we see you on Nightly News. From Montana's news leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back, everybody, and as you get ready to start your weekend, how about you get ready to give your brain a little workout as well? And today's a good day to do that because it's also National Puzzle Day. So take your pick, jigsaw, crossword, trivia, word searches, brain teasers, Sudoku, 
there are a lot of options to help you improve your memory, cognitive function, vocabulary, and learning, as well as basic problem solving skills. You, know, you can mark the day by doing a puzzle with a friend or challenge yourself with a type of puzzle you've never tried before. <laughs> you can even post a photo of your completed puzzle to social media with the hashtag National Puzzle Day. Well, thank you for making us a part of your evening. The NBC Nightly News is next, and we'll see you back here at 6. Have a great and safe night.